Hello, my friends. Happy Veterans Day. It is coming in just a few days. I know this week has been remarkable in so many ways. There has been a, a flurry of electoral activity. And so today we take a, a deep breath. And we pause and we, we prepare ourselves for worship. Whatever time it is, wherever you are, it is a good time to worship God. So welcome. I'm Fred Evenson, the senior minister here at Peacedale Congregational Church. We are an open and affirming congregation in the United Church of Christ, which means no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, no matter your skin color or, or who you love, we welcome you. And we are so glad that you're joining us here right now. All are truly welcome. Please refer to our weekly e-light, our newsletter for any announcements. You can contact the office if you would like to receive that. If you enjoy our service, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, if you are interested, you might even think about joining our faith family. All really are welcome. It, it doesn't matter where you live. You know, I often like to begin with a question. And so today we are finishing up our stewardship series. And for those of you who have been following along, the question for today is a fairly easy one. What was the third love that we talked about, that we spoke of just last Sunday? Remember, first we talked about the love of God and neighbor, the first Sunday. And then we talked about loving and welcoming the children. And last Sunday... Just a week ago, we focused on loving what? That's the question. The answer? Loving and caring for creation. That's what we talked about last Sunday. By the way, you should have received your pledge cards by now. And we are hoping that you will return them by next Sunday as we have a special dedication service, uh, especially on that day. So let's prepare ourselves now for worship as we enter into a spirit of prayer. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, whose steadfast love endures forever, we come to you today remembering Jesus and his new commandment to love one another even as Christ loves us. And we remember, we remember that he said no one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And so today we celebrate and we give thanks for the veterans. We are so grateful, God, for the veterans. And we pray that today and in the days to come, they will feel honored and remembered. Let every woman, every man, young or old, feel our enduring gratitude for their service, God. It is their selfless love and dedication that makes possible the free elections like the one that is happening right now. We are so grateful, God. Help our veterans to be understood. God, you know you know how hard it can be for veterans to return home from battle, to try to adjust to everyday life in the civilian world. And we pray, God, we pray that they would be healed if that is what is needed. God, we, we pray that you would draw them closer to you. 
that you would bless them in every possible way. God, we, we thank you for your example and for, for your loving spirit that is in our lives every day. We love you so much, God. Thank you for being with us here now as we worship you. It is in Jesus' holy name we pray. We love you so much, God. Amen. With Veterans Day on the way, we are thinking about those who put their lives on the line, some of whom have laid down their life for the rest of us. And so thank you. Thank you to all who serve or have served in the military, especially the families who have lost loved ones to the, the violence of war. We are so grateful to all of you. Let's join our, our hearts and our voices in song now as we sing God Bless America. The storm clouds gather far across the sea. Let us pledge allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in a solemn prayer. God bless America, land that I love. Beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans white with foam. God bless America. Continue to contemplate the love of God. Let us listen now for the Word of God. This morning's scripture reading is from John's 15th chapter, starting at the 9th verse. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments 
and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servants do not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appoint you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. What's love got to do with it? You remember that Tina Turner song? What does love have to do with it? That's a good question. Jesus says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. We begin this day, our last Sunday in our stewardship campaign series, thinking about what it means to be a a friend of God. What does that mean? Carol Vetter has some thoughts for us to ponder on this important day. So let's listen. Hi, I'm Carol Vetter, and it is an honor to serve as the current president of this wonderful church. I grew up in a small UCC church out in California. And when we moved to Rhode Island, I knew I wanted to find a UCC church in which to raise my own family. I started this search here at Peacedale Congregational Church, and we never left. We moved here for my husband's job, not knowing anyone and having no family in the area. This church soon became my extended family and really did help me raise my kids. I truly believe that it was God's love that led me here. My kids have such great memories of Peacedale Church. Kenny, when he went on the UCC national mission trip that Sylvia Blanda led, and Matthew going on another mission trip to West Virginia. And then there were the things that all three participated in, the many Christmas pageants, baking pumpkin pies at Thanksgiving, starring in those videos that Bob Hackey produced for their Sunday school projects, and of course, the sleepouts for homeless awareness each January. Last December, my family and I lit the Advent candles one Sunday. Many people came up to me and said they remembered Jack as a baby. And here he was, a grown up young man. I have made so many friends here at church, many of whom I count as my most cherished friends. These are the people I talk to weekly, sometimes daily. They are the ones that I know who will be there for me no matter what. I truly love this church and this faith community. So I am pleased to give of my time, talent, and treasure. I have already filled out my pledge card and sent it in. It's such a small way to give back for all that this church has given me. Thank you. God's love led her to our faith family, a community of friends, an extended family. Thank you, Carol, for your, your comments. This, this wonderful family is where we dwell within the love of Christ, where we dwell within the love of God, like those nested Russian dolls. You know what I'm talking about? And we are friends of God. And so today's reading, it comes just after Jesus has been teaching about the vine. You remember, he's the vine, and we are the branches. The image is a, that's a helpful image. Imagine the vine with its many, 
many branches all intertwined, and you really can't tell where one branch stops and another one starts. We are interconnected, aren't we? Woven together into one tapestry, one body, one interlinked chain that is identifiable uh, mainly by one specific characteristic, love. Now, love, it can be a tricky word. Our English word for love translates several Greek words for love. The Greek word used in today's reading is agape. And that's traditionally understood as God's love for us. The, the color of this word is, is a steadfast, selfless kind of love. A sacrificial love. And it's a major part of God's character in which we are able to participate by way of grace. It's a kind of love that is interested mainly in the good of the other person. It's not limited or restricted to a few close friends. This love is available to all. And today we are we're singing the praises of our faith family. So grateful we are for, for connections and for the friendships that have blossomed with our, our sisters and brothers in Christ. This matter, I have to tell you, it's a personal one for me and for my family. As some of you know, my kids, they suffer from, well, a general lack of grandparents. And, and thankfully, some of you have befriended my kids in this extended family kind of way of which Carol was speaking. In fact, on Halloween, I wanted to tell you, a member of our faith family came and, and hung little Halloween treats from a window on the outside of our house. Now, it may seem like a small thing. I get that. But for my kids, for my kids, it was the kind of thing that a, a grandparent or a really good friend might do. And it is so appreciated, especially as isolated as we are these days. Such connections, oh, they are so precious. And it's an example of dwelling within the love of God, loving people the way God loves us, thoughtfully, compassionately. And Jonathan Kring, he writes a story about Benny. I'd like to share with you. Benny was a little boy who loved his mom. Of course, most kids do love their moms, but his love, it was stronger. Benny believed that he would love his mom even if she weren't his mom, if you know what I mean. She was always happy. She always seemed to have a, a story to go along with, with every problem and a joke to accompany every blessing. They, they lived on the third floor in the, the Briargate Apartments. Now, Benny used to complain. He would complain about having to climb all the stairs until his mother pointed out two very important points. How special, she said, it is to live on the third floor. First, we get all this exercise without having to pay for a gym. And then, when we finally get to the top of the stairs, we have the most beautiful view of everything in the whole town. And Benny had to agree. Although, some nights, when he was particularly tired from school, uh, the climb seemed a bit arduous. But always arriving at the top, he would rejoice over seeing the, this vista of scenery before him. Mom was right. Mom always made, made a point of, of making sure that Benny always was aware of the needs of others. Just downstairs, she would say, we need to think about the folks. Maybe they don't have as much as we do. Maybe they are hurting. Maybe 
if we make a few extra biscuits, we could take a couple to them after dinner. Because just downstairs, she would say, there are people always in need. Now, Benny, he wasn't so sure he agreed. He knew that he and his mother were fairly poor. And she had a difficult time making ends meet. Although you could never really tell by her disposition, nor did a word of complaint pass her lips. Just downstairs, she would say, those, those people are the people in need. So Benny, he visited a little girl, a little girl in, a, in the apartment on the ground floor. He figured she must be really downstairs. So he carried her books for her. He paid for her lunch twice a week at school. And he made sure that when his mother made those extra specials, the little girl and her family got some. The little girl was very gracious, and the family was grateful for the generosity. Benny, Benny was about 11 years old when his mother became very sick. And once again, you could hardly tell, except that she became smaller and frail, and her skin turned very white. But she still continued to tell Benny, just downstairs, there were people in greater need. Benny had just turned 12 years old, springtime, when his mother passed away. He didn't have any other relatives. So the family of the little girl, she came to see him. They asked him if he wanted to live with them now that his mother had passed away. Benny said, oh, I don't want to be any trouble. I know that you, uh, that you don't have much money. And the father, surprised, he looked at Benny and then he laughed. <laughs> Didn't you know we own this apartment building? So I think we can afford one more mouth to feed. Benny was a bit bewildered, but he was also delighted to be part of this new family. And he wondered if his mother had known that the father of this family, just downstairs, was the landlord. He would never know. It didn't really matter. The words and the beauty of her philosophy live on. He never forgot what his mother said, because no matter how low you get in life, there is always someone who is just downstairs from where you are. Benny loved his neighbor. You could say he lived within the love of Jesus, which meant that he was ultimately nested within the love of God, finding refuge, shelter in the love that will not let us go. And during this the series, we have focused on the love of God and neighbor, on welcoming and loving the children, and the love of creation. And so we finish. We finish today pondering what it means to love as God loves, to be God's friend. Eve Keenan will now share with us what Peace Dale Congregational Church, PDCC, means to her. So let's listen. When I began to contemplate my pledge for the upcoming year, I thought back over the years about my connections to PDCC. I remembered getting an award for nine years of perfect attendance at Sunday school in what is now Fellowship Hall. I remember getting my first Bible in third grade. I remember being confirmed on Monday, Thursday, many years ago. This church community also supported my husband in his desire to have a Catholic priest at our wedding in our sanctuary 51 years ago. Mm. When we returned to town, I wondered if this was going to be the right faith community for me, 
as I had grown in my spiritual journey and wondered if this church had grown too. Much, of, much to my relief and pleasure, I found a vibrant, faith-based church, very much in touch with my values and beliefs. I was impressed to see the stewardship members actually talking about ties and talents, the youth group active in all kinds of missions and community building, a minister inviting the full diversity of our community to communion. A series of meetings was actually asking the question, what does God call us to be? This faith community bustles with God's work, not just with dynamic worship services, but also throughout the week with Bible studies, music, fellowship, and community ministries. I have watched new people join our faith community, drawn to PDCC by our actions and caring for one another, the community, and many people in need throughout the world. Each in his or own way seeks to build God's kingdom here on earth, just as Jesus taught us in his prayer. I see folks giving up their Friday afternoons and Saturdays to record, film, and edit, and produce our online services. Folks giving up Sunday afternoons to sell script cards. <laughs> Parents rebuilding our education programs to meet the needs of today's children in a digital world. Volunteers are anxiously awaiting the reopening of the dinner table. A new group has formed around social justice that takes seriously the need for change. As we witness the ongoing racism in our country, Members are taking the issue seriously by studying different texts and supporting the newly formed task organization that is taking a role in helping South Kingstown to look at the infrastructure that keeps racism in place locally. This is a faith community that makes me proud to be a member of the UCC and this church especially. The policy statements from our national organization help us define who we are making the label Democrat or Republican unimportant. It is so important to me that this is the first pledge I make each year and am sure to fill immediately. I ask you to reflect on what God has called you to do to support these efforts. Where would you and your family and our community be without PDCC? Thank you, Eve. Jesus invites us into a relationship with God. And through such friendship, we are dwelling within the love of God. It's a joyful, compassionate way to live, mindful of those who are just downstairs. As Eve said, our family, our faith family, excels when it comes to loving those, these, these friends, as our own. And so this is how we befriend our loving God. And today, we ask you, will you pledge your support of these great loves, your support of our faith family, your support of God's loving mission through all all of us. What's love got to do with it? Everything, my friends. Everything. Thanks be to God, who is love. Amen. And now, let's sing together. I am a friend of God. Am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me, that you love me? It's amazing. 
am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Is it true that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Who am I that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. It's amazing, it's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. Of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Let's continue to listen now for the voice of our still speaking God. Let's pray. gracious and powerful God. We remember that the scripture tells us that you are love. And, and today, especially we recognize that our nation is in need of your healing love, God. We are in need of your healing love. Given the, the recent events, some are are trying to celebrate the results. Some are, are trying to heal from them. But you are able to bring us all together, God, with your spirit in your love. And so even as we, we ask you what you would have us do to share your love in these times, Help us to center on the power of your redeeming love as we dedicate ourselves, God, to carry out our mission as a UCC church, to welcome all, to love all, to seek justice for all. God, people will know, people will know that we are Christians by our love. And we, we are committed, God, to living your love. Bless us, God. Bless us in this singular commitment. Bless us, God, as a, a faith family. Bless our friendship with you and with those 
just downstairs. God, hear us now as we silently lift up to you both our, our joys and our heart's desires. We thank you, God, for hearing our prayer as together we pray the words Jesus invited us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, let us love one another. I could say, for the love of God, turn in your pledge card. But that might sound a little bit flip, so I won't say that. Instead, I will say, share the love of God by turning in your pledge card. And, and we will celebrate all the cards, uh, the tithes that bind us, you could say, at next Sunday's service. And there are many ways to give, of course, whether it be through your time and talents or financially. And you could give to the mission of the month and or the ministries of this church. And here are some ways for you to do that. May God bless both our giving and our receiving. And now, as you do go forth, may God's Spirit inspire you to live and love as friends of God. Amen. Be well, my friends. <laughs>